If you ever wanted to 3D print your own Transformers related stuff and accessories, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Well, this is the Frozen Sonic Mega AKS Resin 3D Printer. This right here is my favorite thing. And this isn't just a review of the printer, this is going to be a quest to 3D print one of the most iconic artifacts in Transformers history, the Matrix of Leadership. But before we get there, we're gonna need to master this printer by 3D printing some other Transformers related things on the way. This printer was sent to me by Frozen themselves because this video is sponsored by them. They also sent me their wash and cure station, oh which we will take a look at. Now, what is resin printing? Resin printing is the process of printing things with resin. I printed a variety of things with it, starting off with the Autobot insignia. I printed this in the RPG resin they gave me. I am really impressed with how this came out. It is looking very, very good. I got this model off Thingiverse. Now on the back, all this was where the support material was, so I cut that off and I left these marks, and this can be sanded down, or I could have tried adjusting my supports. We're gonna have to figure out a solution for that, so that way it doesn't affect the detail on the matrix. It's still something I need to experiment with, and overall, I think it looks really fantastic. Now, I did also print this again with the hyper fine resin because I wanted to see how that will look. Would the matrix be better printed in this type of resin? The RPG resin is better for durability and flexibility while the hyper fine resin is better for details. You might not be able to notice some differences but to me I think the hyper fine one looks a lot better so we might need to print the matrix in that. Both of these are looking pretty good. I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing here. This is basically going to be like my go-to test prints. Now here's an Autobot insignia on a filament printer. This one also came out pretty well. It might be hard to see because this is white but you can still see a lot of the layer lines on here and I made it so you could see less on the top layer over here and from the side you should be able to see some of the layer lines as well for this. I had it print at a pretty low layer height so the layer lines would be less noticeable but I honestly prefer the ones from the resin printers a whole lot more than the ones from a filament printer. Now before we get to the printing process and other prints let's take a look at the printer itself. The printer has a sizable print volume of 333 by 185 by 300 millimeters. In American that's 12.9 by 7.28 by 11 11.81 inches, meaning I can print some pretty big stuff on it or a lot of smaller pieces in one time. I wanted to print accessories for figures before, so this will be useful. It has a resolution of 43 microns, and now we're getting into math territory, which I'm not good at. And I'm really impressed with the quality of some of the things I printed on here. The unboxing is fairly straightforward and easy. The, uh, the little doggy is not included. Since this is a fairly heavy printer, you might need some help with the unboxing process. So inside is the printer, which contains the large metal build plate with some trypophobia style holes. This will significantly reduce the peeling force during the printing process. This does also have a little bit of weight to it. A thank you card for purchasing this. I did not purchase this. I don't have that kind of money. We got some other stuff in here also. A funnel for pouring resin back into the bottles. I thought it was for drinking alcohol. This is for removing resin from the vat. No alcohol usage here. This is the vat for the resin with an ACF sheet that helps with faster print speed at the cost of quality and we'll check out the quality quality of these prints later on in the video to see if the speed is worth it. You actually can put alcohol in here when trying to clean it up. Satisfying. It's made of a metal body with a cyberpunk style yellow lid giving it a really cool sci-fi style look. The lid is also on a hinge so that way I can't remove it and put it down somewhere and forget where I put it because I lack object permanence. I know it's a large object guys, I'm just an idiot okay? Another thing I printed here was this Optimus Prime statue. This one is pretty big. Unfortunately a few setbacks happened during this print. Now this 3D model was made by Nico Industries. For this print I had to print it in several different parts. The main chest piece, both of the arms, both of the legs, and the head were all printed in separate pieces. I didn't print the Autobot base for this which is why I'm awkwardly holding it right here. Now this is all printed in the RPG resin except for the head which was in the hyperfine resin. For basically my second resin print this came out pretty well I think. The model itself doesn't have a fair bit of detail to it but what is there has been printed out really well. Now unfortunately when I tried cleaning the vat I accidentally tore the ACF sheet. This was a huge issue because I couldn't print without it and at this point I only had an Autobot insignia and a partial printed Optimus. Luckily Frozen was kind of enough to send me more ACF sheets which I installed onto the printer. So I gave the print another go and now we have this. Now unfortunately here I had some bad luck with super glue where I applied too much and it started dripping out. I was able to get some of it off with acetone. This is something you're going to sand and paint over anyways because you're not going to want a gray Optimus Prime. You're going to end up doing some post processing work, sanding it to make sure all these scuffs are gone and then painting and priming it to get a really nice looking G1 Optimus Prime statue. Now you will notice some like bumps over here. 
that is where the support material was that I had to take off after this printed. And as you can see, I tried sanding it a little bit over there and a little bit on the back. Now, unfortunately, I don't want to do any sanding on the matrix because I'm lazy. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to negate that. One thing about this model though, for resin printing is that this bit inside the ion blaster is hollow. So you're gonna have some uncured resin in there. So if you do print this, I would modify that to where it's closed off so you don't get any uncured resin there. I think what came out here is pretty good. The head printed fairly well and I think the little details came out pretty good. Once again, you're probably gonna need to sand down some of these scuffs a little bit. I think the Autobot insignia also came out pretty decently as well as the smokestacks. All the holes came out fairly well. I'm very impressed by this. Here's a quick look at the back. A lot of the nice detail going on over there. I do like how some of the detail on the tires came out. Once again, that's just some super glue residue for my silly little mistake. Some of the hand detail going on over here is done pretty nicely. Both the hands printed out really well. Also, this thing is heavy. It has some weight to it. All the bits of detail like the windshield wipers and the front grille came out really well. Even some of the shapes over here on his knees. Even though it's not perfect, I like how it came out a lot. And I think if we change the settings and use the hyperfine resin, we can get a much better print for the matrix. Now let's talk about resin printing. So inside the vat is where we pour the resin. Now while this might look tasty with its gray colors, uh, don't actually eat it. The build plate dips down into the resin, lifting up one layer at a time. Each layer is exposed to a UV light at the bottom of the screen with layers in the shape of the object, solidifying the layer before it moves on to the next one. The build plate has a hook to allow the resin to drip back into the vat, which saves resin and keeps everything tidy and clean. The placement of the handles and screws for the vat is a little bit awkward and the handles could be just a bit more dull. This area is for their pump and fill if you decide to get one. Now when it comes to resin, you gotta, you, you gotta be safe. You don't want to inhale the resin and you don't want it on your skin. So always wear a respirator with organic vapor filters and wear nitrile gloves. I also wear safety goggles and a shower cap because I have longer hair. I'd even recommend wearing a lab coat. The end goal is to make your neighbors think you might be making silly consumable substances that I can't really talk about. This printer will be in a shed away from people. I eventually plan on getting a grow box or an enclosure and having this thing vent out the window. The printer does have a section for a vent. God, my neighbors are going to be so concerned. It's always something with these people. Hold up, these people? If you plan on working with resin printing, I recommend looking into the safety aspects of it all. On the printer, we have a fairly decent sized touchscreen allowing us to navigate through the menus. Make sure not to touch this. If the gloves you are wearing have directly touched resin, there's also a USB port for getting our prints on the printer. The power switch and the bit for the cable, this thingy, whatever, whatever it's called. I, I, I don't know what it's called. It's on the back corner, easy to reach to. To start printing, I look up whatever my heart desires at the moment, find a file that I want, put it in a slicer. This frozen printer came with, I think like an 80 day subscription to Cheetu box. I make all the adjustments needed in the slicer and put it on a USB flash drive, put that into the printer and print. After I print the file, I'll let the resin drip for a bit and remove some of the excess resin. I'll remove the print from the bed and put it in here. Now this is a giant wash station. It holds up to 25 liters and it's best to use either 91 or 99% IPA. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that's gonna be enough. This also has two fans. It can spin at speeds of 300 or 275 RPM. You use the knob to select low or high, push it in, set it to the time you want, and push it in again to start. And you do have to push the knob in pretty hard. There's a valve on the side to easily let liquid out once it gets too dirty. I recommend taking the same safety precautions when working with IPA as well. After watching, I put the resin in the cure station. This specific one will both dry and cure my prints. It has a rotating, um, uh, rotating thing at the bottom. You can place a detached rack according to your needs to dry and cure big sculptures or lots of miniatures. I just use, I, I, I just use the spinny thing. This also has fans that spin at 1700 RPM. Now let's move back onto the fun stuff. Oh, not that stuff. I decided I wanted to print the matrix in the hyperfine resin, but I wanted to do another test print, so I printed this blaster for my Transformers figures. Something this small would have been pretty hard to do on a filament printer. I think this came out really impressively as well. I kind of accidentally broke it off over here. That is on me. <laughs> but this is pretty cool, and it is 5mm compatible. It's a little tight though, but he can hold it. And now I can print new accessories for my Transformers figures. This is something, once again, that I would decide to go ahead and clean up a little bit and then paint. I also printed the handle to a sword. And I do like how this came out as well. I do need to print the pointy bit for this. And this can also be held by my Transformers figures. Now, finally, let's print the matrix. Now, here's the thing. The actual model for this matrix is pretty big. It's made for giant robot hands. And I need to scale this down to human sized hands because I have human hands. The printer does have the capability to print the file at 100% scale. I was just trying to conserve resin so I could print multiple things for this video. For this print, I decided to cut the handles in half. So that way, the support material won't be on the detailed bits. So I 
after adjusting the scale, adding the supports, I went ahead and printed this. Here is the final resin printed matrix of leadership. This file is also by Nico Industries. Now once again, all that white stuff is super glue residue because super glue exploded in my hands when trying to put this together. Here's an audio snippet of that happening. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's mainly on my hands? I did get quite a bit of super glue in the crevices over here, but I did manage to clean those out. I don't know why I have such bad luck with super glue. Also, this is pretty hefty. Having it in that size without hollowing it out would have made it very heavy. I think this is a really fantastic looking print. A lot of the little detail on here came out pretty well, I think. Same with the handles over here. The design for the model itself was really great and pretty intricate. I kind of messed up the gluing over here because I tried hot glue before switching back to super glue after it exploded. I think with some paint work, this would look really nice and it would cover up a lot of those accidental white spots from the glue. Turning around to the back, this also looks really amazing and the print came out really nice and clean. You can see some print lines which you could probably sand out. Once again, a final 3D print isn't always a final product. This printer is really great for printing out sizable stuff and in pretty good detail. From November 18th to December 2nd, they're doing a really big Black Friday deal with up to 15% off store wide and an extra $15 off if you use this code. I think this is a fairly impressive printer and if you want one, check the link in the description below. Now if you enjoyed this video, check out this other video over here that I think you might like.